now my great pleasure to recognize the distinguished for former chairman of the committee, our good friend. It's good to see you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman Cole, thank you very much, and Ranking Member McGovern, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, to join you today. I must confess, uh, I enjoyed watching the first several hours of this with great, great delight. It kind of reminded me of uh, being in your chairs. Mr. Chairman, before I get started, I want you to know that I passed out to you and the ranking member and perhaps other members uh, a list of the historical information about revenue that the United States government receives. Please note in 2010, $2.16 trillion dollars in 22, $4.9 trillion. We have grown the amount of revenue uh, in this country. Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you and each of your members for their attention today. Uh, each of you are distinguished members of this committee, and your service to this Congress is very important. Today, I add an amendment to H.R. 3746, Fiscal Responsibility Act. As the text for this legislation was published over the weekend, I began looking to find what I could and to see what would be said about people who went through the 99-page bill. I was pleased to see that there are many helpful measures that were negotiated between the White House and our young speaker, including in the bill to move our federal government closer to a stable financial footing. I'm pleased that two appropriations packages that we passed, the next two, will be constrained by spending limits, and I'm committed to you today that I will support continuing these limits through the year 2029, the entire uh, process. I was also glad to see NEPA, NEPA, reform, NEPA reform, reforms included in this bill, which I hope will contribute to domestic energy production and cut back the amount to which federal agencies interfere and undermine the development of critical infrastructure that fuels this country and saves us from further embarrassment of inflation. With that said, I am far from the first to say this bill could go much further. You've had a number of people say that today. But I would like to quote former Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Michael Mullen, who formally observed in 2010, the most significant threat to our national security is our debt. I'm pleased that this bill maintains defense spending while making necessary cuts to non-defense spending. However, our national security is not measured solely by what Congress appropriates to our defense efforts. It's, uh, it's really the overall spending that would be the problem. My amendment that I'm here to speak of today, Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member and Committee, would add to the overall spending reductions in this bill and provide accountability for the Internal Revenue Service. As currently written, however, the bill rescinds $1.4 billion from the IRS's Enforcement and Operations Fund from the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. Rescinding $1.4 billion this year is not a fix when there's an additional $70 billion that will be appropriated over the next 10 years. My amendment would rescind all unobligated funding provided to the Internal Revenue Service in the Inflation Reduction Act. Notably, my amendment would retain the amount appropriated for taxpayer services including taxpayer advocacy, help with filing, and other customer service operations. Congress provided an additional $80 billion of new spending over the next 10 years in the IRA. The administration declared that this funding would be used to hire 87,000 new IRS agents in addition to the headcount that they presently have, and similarly increase audits in the effort to pay for other spending, which was included in the previously passed IRA. Writing an 11-figure check to a failed agency is not going to fix 
their problems. An 11 figure check that comes directly off the bottom line of debt. The IRS has shown itself to have serious operational challenges in collecting and processing returns. And I'm sure we're all familiar with the difficulty constituents are having in filing their annual income tax returns. This is an agency that must not be must not be rewarded, but must be held accountable. The federal employees who work the IRS must fully come back to work for this agency to work properly and for them to be held accountable and to be responsible, just like other agencies that are vital to the United States government and the people of this country. Operational enforcement changes must be considered on an annual basis through the Congressional Appropriations and Oversight process instead of providing unprecedented sums of, of funding first and asking questions later. I am generally supportive of the IT modernization and structure changes that the IRS is undertaking to ensure that the agency can collect lawfully owed taxes and process returns in a timely manner. But it must be done through regular annual appropriations processes, in my opinion. As you know, one of the first actions that this chamber took back in January was passing the gentleman from Nebraska, Congressman Adrian Smith's Family and Small Business Taxpayer Protection Act. It was passed almost identically a measure a few weeks ago in the Limit, Save, and Grow Act. I believe that the full rescission of these IRS funds is fiscally responsible to take as an action by Congress in this raise the debt limit. I want to thank each of you for considering the issues and ideas I brought to you, and I want you to know that I appreciate your time that each of you make to this important committee. Mr. Chairman, I yield back my time. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman from Georgia is recognized for any testimony he has about it.